Alien Quadrilogy. Once again, if you can hear any sounds from the outside, the window is open. I'm a little surprised that I haven't done the whole Wicked Witch of the West thing yet, but who knows, maybe it's coming. I've seen all four, I don't know, half a dozen times total maybe, and two of those viewings have been of the special extended Director's Cut edition. Thought I'd cover all the bases. I should maybe start this one by saying I don't actually hate a single one of these movies. I consider each one to hold, at the very least, some interesting aspects. Now, I love Aliens, and Alien, I consider it to be a very well done and influential film. On the subject of personal tastes, Alien is not entirely for me. Now, before you crucify me, I want to make clear there is a lot of talent in the film. While not every movie Ridley Scott directs turns out a masterpiece, he certainly has directed his share. And in the acting department we've got Ian Holm, Harry Dean Stanton, and one of my personal favorite actors of all time, John Hurt. I also want to make it absolutely clear I love the concept. And even though I find Aliens to be the more entertaining and engaging film, I'm not going to forget that Alien was the one that set it up, that established the rules. And obviously, Aliens wouldn't exist or wouldn't be the same movie without it. It's also obviously very influential, as I've already said. For example, the more recent Sunshine very clearly takes inspiration from Alien. It is a very scary and surprising film, and it gets right what a lot of sci-fi around that time didn't. As an example, I love 2001, A Space Odyssey, brilliant film, but part of the problem in that and several other sci-fi films with spaceships around that time, these things look like they're brand new. How are we supposed to buy that? They don't look like they've been used at all. Star Wars got that right and Alien got that right. That goes for the ship and it goes for the way the people dress. They're, you know, casual because no one can stand to run around in a uniform forever. It also deserves noting that it's not, you know, a military craft. It's just civilians, you know, they have a job, they're transporting this mineral, and then the fucking alien happens. And also, today it might be a cliche, but at the time, the whole thing with this signal isn't a distress signal, it's a warning, was probably pretty original. And let's not forget, cliches are cliches because they used to be really, really good. People just kept copying that one or couple of originals. The design of the alien by H.R. Geiger, masterful. It's one of those far too few alien creatures that really feel alien. You can't compare it that much to, like, human beings. You can't relate to it. It just works as something scary and foreign. Now, with all that positive said, to me, the movie suffers from a couple of things, and they do drag it down a bit, in my opinion. While the atmosphere and tone are quite effective for making it creepy and scary, they also leave the film feeling like it's keeping you at an arm's distance all the time. In all of my viewings, I never feel like I can completely connect with these people or their situation on the ship or that I really get to know these characters. I mean, don't get me wrong, I really like the fact that you don't know that Ripley is going to be the sole survivor until she is, you know? I mean, if you watch it and you don't already know that there are three sequels also starring Sigourney Weaver, then you wouldn't immediately point to her and say, oh, she's going to make it. That's an excellent quality for any horror movie to have. But, you know, basically, you know, you've got the weird guy, Brett, I think, Harry Dean Stanton. You've got Veronica Cartwright, who basically just gets emotional. You've got the black guy, who's a little bit of an ass. Kane dies before he has much to do. The captain really doesn't stand out, and why exactly is he so motherfucking stupid? Ripley insists that they have to wait 24 hours, and he knows that that's the rule, and yet he just says, no, let us in. That just leaves Ash, and to quote the token black guy in the movie, Ash is a goddamn robot. They simply don't feel all that well-developed. I mean, let's take Aliens. Maybe you don't get 
you know, like a background of each of the characters, but you can sense their relationships with one, and you get an idea of what they're like. Another thing that several other sci-fi movies set in outer space suffer from the isolation aspect. This also harms 2001 A Space Odyssey. The problem is we spend so much time far away from cities, villages, whatever, communities. We're stuck with these few people and they're far away from anything we know. And this leaves us feeling, I don't know, a sense of homesickness maybe? It's just more difficult to relate to it and it leaves the films a little bit straining to watch. And then we get to the special effects and I'm expecting to catch a lot of flack on this one but I maintain they're not that convincing. These are not the words of someone who wants excessive CGI in all movies. I like old-fashioned effects. However, John Carpenter's The Thing came out three years later and is much more convincing. I would argue that the original Star Wars is also better, but I'll admit it's been a long time since I've seen a version that wasn't one of George Lucas' special editions. Trust me, if the effects do the job, you won't hear any complaints from me. I'd also like to point out that special effects are a mere tool. They're not the whole movie. If you're only looking for visual trickery, go watch one of those ride movies or something by Roland Emmerich. Well, to be fair, he has made some pretty entertaining movies in my opinion. To get back to Alien, the effects do not do the job. They call attention to themselves. As far as the Alien itself goes, no problem there. I technically know it's a guy in a suit, but I see it so briefly, and when I see it, it's quite imposing, so that one sells it. I'm also not talking about that humongous double, triple explosion at the end of the movie, even though that is ridiculously excessive. No, I'm mainly referring to Ash. To be blunt, if you are fooled by the fake head of Ash, you were probably closing your eyes when they cut from one to the other. They even have the arm in a wrong part of the screen. It moves like from here to here. In a cut that couldn't be much more obvious if there was a trumpet announcing it. And after he's done his little speech and they hit him again, I'm sorry, the mouth looks like that of a clown or something. In general, this movie has a lot of weird little silly things. What's with Ash freaking out over Ripley staring into the microscope? Do so many of the most important officers on the ship leave to investigate the planet in some homage to Star Trek? What the hell is up with Ripley's ass crack? Who the hell put Jonesy the cat in that locker? Okay, maybe some of these are a little nitpicky. Let's talk about the white goo on Ash. I get that the androids in this franchise bleed white, but why does he puke out so much white crap? Why is it the first thing that happens when he gets turned back on? Is that supposed to not make us laugh out loud? And again, I'm not trying to be unreasonable here. I'm just saying it looks more funny than creepy or whatever they were going for. Why did they put it in the movie? Is there really any intentional comedy in this movie that works? And while it makes for a good scare, why doesn't the captain listen to them when they're saying, it's right behind you, it's right there? As for the theatrical cut versus the director's cut, not a lot has really changed. There's really only one significant addition, I would say. The cocoon scene. This is the first time in the franchise that we see anyone be cocooned, which, as of Aliens, has been pretty widely accepted as one of the things they do. Anyway, if you're still watching, let's move on. Moving on to Aliens. This is where I really got to love this franchise. It's solely responsible for a third of the credit for making the Alien vs. Predator games possible, what with the inclusion of the Colonial Marines. The Colonial Marines are so much fun to watch. They're badass, they have personality, they have cool dialogue, jam-packed testosterone, and their weapons and technology are awesome. 